Thank you, Dan. Um, we're going to turn now to an illness, chronic fatigue syndrome, that uh, is, as you'll see, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the case definition, defined uh, by a working group conf uh, convened by the CDC, really by exclusively defined by symptoms. Um, severe fatigue that persists or elapses for at least six months is of new or definite onset, not substantially alleviated by rest, resulting in substantial reduction in activities, and is accompanied by four or more of a group of other symptoms that are also chronically present for at least six months. And then finally, uh, the patient, to meet the case definition, does not have uh, any active medical condition or several psychiatric conditions that could explain a state of chronic fatigue. When you, although the complaint of fatigue is a very common one in medical practice, when you subject patients with the presenting complaint of fatigue to this case definition, it's a very small fraction who meet it. Um, the, since the illness is defined exclusively by a group of symptoms, of subjective expressions, the obvious question that any doctor or any scientist uh, must have is, are there any objective, biological, measurable phenomena that distinguish these patients from other patients, healthy patients, depressed patients? Um, and I'm going to, I think the answer to that is yes, there are many. I'm only going to summarize a few of the findings in the literature that seem most pertinent to the topics that have been discussed this morning and at this meeting. And the first are neurologic studies in chronic fatigue syndrome. It was a paper presented uh, about a year ago uh, of proteomic markers in the spinal fluid of patients with chronic fatigue syndrome and healthy controls. Small study, um, but uh, using mass spec to identify a whole series of proteins there were a group of proteins, proteases, antioxidant proteins, proteins involved in the inflammatory response and structural repair that were found much more often in the CFS patients than in the healthy controls. Magnetic resonance imaging uh, was actually first used by Dan Peterson, Paul Cheney, and colleagues in patients who appear to have been part of a, what may have been an epidemic of this illness in northern Nevada and California in the late 1980s, mid-1980s. Um, in many patients with this illness studied in that region and in subsequent uh, populations around the world, small punctate areas of high signal on T2-weighted imaging in the white matter have been reported. This, obviously, in the cerebellum, an atypical location, but much more often in subcortical regions. In the uh, Northern California, Nevada uh, patient groups, one of whom appeared to be part of an epidemic, the other cases appeared to be sporadic, these MRI findings were present in many fewer of the patients than in age and sex-matched healthy control subjects. Um, and the difference was unambiguous, and three different neuroradiologists blindly read all of the images with 97% agreement. SPECT scanning, which is really measuring uh, the microcirculation tracer, radionuclide tracer in the microcirculation and or uptake of the tracer by uh, central nervous system cells, is also abnormal in many of the patients. Uh, the signal in the outer part of the cortex in, in particular is sort of tattered. You see these spots where you lose signal altogether, uh, and that is not seen in healthy patients. And in a formal study of SPECT scanning in which instead of subjective interpretation, um, the computer that was analyzing the images counted the signal coming from the plane, the centrum semiovale plane in the, uh, in the middle of the brain, and simply objectively measured the amount of signal in four different groups, patients with chronic fatigue syndrome, patients with AIDS encephalopathy, 
major depression, healthy controls, uh, and the signal in these two groups was significantly lower than the signal in these two groups. Of course, in this area, like most issues in medicine, not all of the literature agrees. There are some studies that have failed to find these associations, but the preponderance of the evidence on both MRI and SPECT in the published literature uh, finds an association. This is the number of studies uh, that have versus not. This is the number of patients involved in the studies that did versus those that didn't. So not a slam dunk, but the preponderance of the evidence uh, finds th these abnormalities. A variety of ways of testing autonomic nervous system function also have found abnormalities uh, in many of the patients. Again, the preponderance of the evidence uh, it finds these abnormalities, although some studies have not. Uh, and in the more sophisticated testing that's been done, both sympathetic and parasympathetic function have been affected, uh, and coexisting psychiatric illnesses, if there are some, are, bear no relationship to the explanation of the findings. The hypothalamic pituitary, the several hypothalamic pituitary axes are abnormal in chronic fatigue syndrome. The most frequently studied is the HPA adrenal axis in which, to summarize a very large literature, there are consistently reported down regulation of corticotrophin releasing hormone leading to lower release of ACTH by the pituitary, leading to low, low normal but not abnormally low levels of cortisol. Similar uh, abnormalities that distinguish the patients from healthy controls and depressed controls uh, in two other axes. EEG studies, um, we have been, we have recently collected uh, the EEG data from 47 unselected patients with chronic fatigue syndrome compared to 94 healthy control subjects matched for age and gender. All of the subjects and controls were unmedicated, and the spike wave activity was detected objectively using computerized software packages that are used by clinical electroencephalographers. And we have found uh, spike waves, both one or more or two or more, more often in the CFS patients than in the healthy controls, uh, clearly significant differences. There are a lot of other EEG abnormalities in these patients as well, but I don't have time to go into the data uh, at length here.